Our next factor is the broadhead mechanical advantage. And you can think of a broadhead as just a series of inclined planes. And as you'll remember from high school science or uh, any of the science courses you ever took, uh, an inclined plane just lets us do more work with whatever force is available to work with. The amount of influence that mechanical advantage is going to have depends on the types of broadheads you compare. But it has more influence on a perfect flying, structurally secure error than any other factor except the extreme or ultra extreme FOC. Now, the more efficient the rest of your error is, the more penetration gain a higher broadhead mechanical advantage is going to give you. Because the mechanical, it's going to multiply whatever force we can save in the error, what's not being used up inefficiently. It's going to multiply that. So the more efficient that error is, the more multiplication you're going to get from that higher broadhead mechanical advantage. So increasing the mechanical advantage is going to increase the transfer efficiency of your error. I'll talk for just a minute about three to one ratio heads because there's a lot of people I see the term kicked around now. The uh, three to one ratio originally was developed the term by uh, Howard Hill and it referred to his one inch wide, three inch long uh, broadhead. And it roughly works out to a 3.0 mechanical advantage. But now you have people taking multi-blade heads and they measure, you know, either from the center line up or they'll measure sometime from the ferrule up for the height of the blade, then they'll measure the length of one cutting edge. Well, if that turns out to be three, it doesn't matter how many blades are on there, they're calling that a three to one ratio head, but it's nowhere close to a 3.0 mechanical advantage. As a matter of fact, it's not even close to a 2.0 mechanical advantage. So when you hear people throw around three to one ratio, it's not really telling you anything of any use at all today. When you calculate mechanical broadhead advantage, you take the length of the cutting edge and you divide that by half of the cut width times the number of cutting edges. Now, if you're looking at a single blade head, it's really easy. You just use the width of the cut at its widest point and the length of the cutting edge. But if it were an inch wide, it would be a half inch high and you would have two cutting edges. You multiply half by two and you get one. If it had a three inch cutting side, uh, then you would divide one into three and you have a 3.0 mechanical advantage. Now, if you took a three blade head that had the same dimensions, it's got a three inch long cutting edge and each blade is a half inch high, the mechanical advantage drops to 2.0. And if it were a four blade, it would be 1.5. Of course, there are no three blades or four blades head out there that comes anywhere close to having a three inch long cutting edge. So you can see that the mechanical advantage on all of those is going to be relatively low. Now, if we took these examples here, if they did exist, basically what this would say is that uh, with the single blade head, you could do 50% more work than you could with a three blade. And you could do twice the amount that you could with a four blade. So a poor mechanical advantage is not good for the transfer efficiency of the air. Now this is a little chart that shows what mechanical advantage does in actual outcomes when we shoot them into tissue. And these are all shot from the same bow. Now the error weights here vary some because it's a really large group of errors. And uh, what do we have? 112 shots in this from 650 to 900 grains. And all of them shot from the 82 pound straight in long bow. These are all uh, normal and high FOC errors. There are no extreme FOC. These are all single blade heads uh, with double bevels. So there's no single bevel heads involved in this. And you can just see what happens to your penetration when the mechanical advantage goes up. And that's the effect that it has on your error penetration. Now this is back from the original Natal study. Now remember this is predominantly Impala and Yala and Warthogs. Animal size of white tail, mule deer, and feral pigs. These are all tissue, soft tissue hits over here. And you see the single blade penetrates the most, three blades, four blades. Now, one thing that's misleading, you see the single blade here caps out around close to 25 inches. <coughs> you can only measure penetration in terms of the length of the wound channel through the tissue. You can't measure how much was out the other side. We had a high number of pass through shots with a single blade. So if it would have been tissue out there to measure it, this, this red bar would be significantly higher than where it is. It was just out there, it's penetration we cannot measure. <coughs> These, excuse me, my voice just about went yesterday. <laughs> uh, this is what happens when we introduce 
just a rib impact. Now remember, these are light animals. So we're talking ribs the size of deer. And there's your single bevel, or single blade, excuse me. And here's the four blade. It now it penetrates the three blade. And when we look at scapular hits, we get the same thing. The single blade, the four blade, and the three blade. This has to do with the very molecular structure of a bone. It's very difficult to split a bone in three directions. It's much easier to split it in one direction or in two directions that are at 90 degree angles. But trying to split it in three directions is very, very difficult to do. Part of nature, Mother Nature's structure to protect the body from those penetrating wounds. So that's something you need to think of when you're picking out your broadhead to use, is that any time you hit a bone, any three blade is going to be your worst penetrating head. On soft tissue, it's going to do fine. But if you hit a bone, you're better off with a four blade than you would be with a three blade.